Hi everyone and welcome back to another craft video. Uh, today's uh, video is going to be the first one in uh, a long line of series all related around um, forest school bushcraft. So forest school is uh, is the type of activities that they might do in schools or they do uh, programs for younger children or younger adults. Um, so uh, which is one of the passions that I have being a primary school teacher. Um, so what I want to show you today is one of the many crafts that you can do with younger children that they can access, they, they, they can take part in, it's not going to be too dangerous for them as they are starting off their kind of forest school bushcraft journey while they're younger. And then as they progress, they, as they get older, they can start going on to kind of like the main skills they have in bushcraft. But this first one that I want to show you for this first episode is um, a, a tinder pouch. Now, this pouch doesn't just have to be for tinder. It can be anything you want to collect or anything you want to hold. Um, but this is what I use my pouch for. So I use mine for my uh, fire lighting. Uh, so you can see it opens up quite big so you can fit quite a lot of stuff in so I've got a big bunch of birch mark uh, I've got cramp balls or can go for cakes got flint steel and uh, paraffin wax biscuits and things for uh, bow drill and all different sorts of things so it, it holds it holds quite a lot in and it's quite well it's a very simple uh, method for uh, creating but uh, very useful um, so let's get into it Okay, so the first thing is the things that you're going to need. So, uh, as you can see, there's nothing here that's too hard to get hold of. So, the first bit, um, I'll get the other piece out so I can show you, is a piece of leather. So, I'll put this one out first. So, this is a, this is another piece I've got. Now, um, with leather, I don't have the resources to go out and get any special leather or, or, or know where to get it from or anything like that. This is simply from the back of an old couch okay so if if you know of anybody that is getting rid of a couch uh, and they're just taking it to the tip you can ask them just to go around and take off any pieces especially the back uh, piece it's going to be the biggest piece um so as far as re resourcing this is going to be i suppose the hardest thing to get hold of especially if you're doing it for a class in school you're going to have to need a few bits of leather to be able to do it uh, obviously if you're doing it with smaller groups you don't need as much um, so I would say the easiest place to um, to get the leather is from old couches or leather coats if you go into charity shops things like that nothing too expensive um, it doesn't need to be the highest quality finest thickest leather just any anything will do really okay um, so these two pieces like I said um, were taken from an old couch and we're going to be using those today the rest of the soles we need a very simple a pair of scissors, uh, a pen or something to just make your outlines on, um, something to make a hole with. So I've got a an awl here, which is just a um, a spiked piece of spiked metal. Okay, just something that's going to be sharp enough to puncture a hole. You can also, if you have them, you could use uh, craft hole punchers. Okay, so things actually designed for creating holes. Just anything sharp that's going to put a hole through the leather. This is why it's quite easy, uh, quite useful to not use dead thick or even high quality leather. Something that's you're easily going to puncture, um, especially for children. And the last two bits is we've got some paracord, but any cord will do. Uh, string, twine, anything at all. This is obviously what we're going to use to uh, cinch up the pouch. Uh, when we're not using it and then the final bits that I've got uh, you can use either of these so the first one is this is to go onto the paracord to um, allow it to be cinched up uh, you can get these off Amazon or eBay you can get them in bulk loads uh, I think packets of a hundred and they're only for a couple of pounds the other thing you can use is pieces of antler um, now if you are able to get hold of um, any pieces of antler at all, even like this one, you can saw off quite a few different discs of this. So it's just as, um, I suppose, easy and cheap to get hold of. You can go into pet stores and buy like dog uh, dog chews, basically dog dog bone chews that they have. I know where uh, pets at home do. There's a box full of 
different bones like this that you can go and buy for your, for your pets. Um, so you can buy some antler and make this if you want, like, uh, I suppose, a more uh, older, maybe vintage like looking uh, toggle for your bag. But you, it's not a necessity. You can do the exact same thing with these from Amazon. So those are the tools that you're going to need. The last thing um, that you don't necessarily need, um, but it makes it easier, is something to draw around. Um, so like a plate. Um, you could use a compass, you know, the mathematical compass, uh, if you really wanted to, but anything large enough, could be a plate, could be a bowl, um, anything that you can draw around which is big enough. Obviously, the bigger the circle that you're going to draw, the larger the pouch you're going to make. You can make them out of, you can make them any size. Uh, I think this pouch that I had all my things, I think this is just slightly larger than this plate. But like I said, if you go smaller, you could, you can get a, a few more pouches from the same piece of leather um, and it's still going to be able to hold things for fire lighting or things that they're collecting. If you're having a bit of foraging time where they're collecting birch bark or things for fire lighting, it doesn't need to be a massive pouch. Okay, so let's get into it. Obviously, the first thing I need to do is just mark out my uh, circle. So I'm just going to draw around this plate on the leather. Now, the reason I've put this as one of the forest school ones, like I said at the beginning, is not just how easy it is to create for an adult, but that it's easy to create for children as well. So being able to um, draw around a plate or a bowl is not something that requires lots of adult supervision, which makes it fantastic to use in forest schools uh, or children's bushcraft uh, courses or lessons. So the next step is we're going to mark out the points that we want to create holes. Now you can do this either way, you can just do it by eye or you can measure it uh, with a ruler or with a tape measure, anything you want to do. But I'm just going to go by eye. So you could say to children to maybe leave two or three fingers width um, between their dots. I'm just going to go around and this is why Sharpies uh, are quite useful because they show up on a lot of fabrics and materials. And it doesn't necessarily need to be able to wash out because this is going to be the inside, uh, the, the, the shinier side of leather is going to be my outside. And uh, this, I suppose, furrier side is going to be my inside. So I'm just going around eyeball and again the children can do this you can make this as hard or as easy as you want to with using rulers or using spacers or any kind but like I said I've just used two finger gaps um, and if you can see so you can see the dots around around the leather um, there may be a centimeter a yeah about a centimeter away from the edge of the plate again if you do go too close to the edge there's the possibility that the leather might rip as you're putting the holes through so you just want a like i say a centimeter maybe more uh, gap from the edge of your circle to the uh, dots that you're going to hole puncture so now comes the time where you are this is I suppose going to be the main bit that you are going to need some adult supervision. Uh, now there's two ways you can do this for an adult. Um, you can obviously, you can puncture it yourself uh, by keeping two fingers on either side of where you know your all is, okay, and pushing through. Now you can have something resting underneath, like a log or a piece of wood. I'm not gonna do it on my dining room table, um, but you can push something you can have something underneath it to uh, stop it going too far. What I would suggest for uh, children is definitely having something underneath, okay, uh, holding the awl on top and almost like the skill of uh, battening. So children in forest schools, I learned how to batten wood. They do it in pairs. Uh, one person holds the knife and the other person does the battening. Um, well, that's how it's taught in with our forest school anyway, uh, you could do it in the same way. So one child is holding the awl in place, okay? And the other child is um, 
kind of battening through and if you have a log underneath uh, it was just going to go into the log like i said if you've got a hole press that can be um can be safer it is quite hard uh, to be able to press it depending on how sharp it is or which which hole press you have um but obviously you're gonna have to go out and and buy them the third way is obviously an adult doing this okay but this is the only bit that's going to need uh, some some supervision but like i said if you're if your children are used to battening and one of them wants to hold the all and the other one batting on top then that's absolutely fine okay so i'm just going to go through and do my holes so i'm just lining up my all my two fingers are on the other side of where i know my all is i'm just going to push through and it doesn't need a lot of force to send it through okay i'll take it out now you are going to get a neater hole with a hole press but an all just does the exact same trick okay so lining up my all with the hole making sure my two fingers are on either side of the two feet side making sure that my two fingers are on either side of the all and then pushing through okay and you're just going to go ahead and you're going to do each hole around the circle okay so now that i've done my holes i'm ready for the next bit uh, before i go on to it though um i forgot to mention so when you're doing your dots you want to um draw an even number of dots you want to create an, an even number of holes and that's because when you thread your core through you want to end up with your cord coming out of a pair of holes if you've got an odd number when you start to uh, fold it which we'll have a look in a second they're not going to match up there need to be pairs of holes for them to go into uh, but yeah, yeah i forgot to say that at the beginning uh, so now i've put my holes in i'm just going to go around with the scissors and i'm going to cut out my circle again this can be done beforehand depending on the age of the children uh, you could you could really do this craft with children much much younger uh, if you have already done the cutting out and if you've already done the the oars and they just need to do uh, some threading uh, to work on fine motor skills for example so you can do this a lot younger um, in a lot younger forest school sessions or, or with kids um, so yeah I'm just going to cut it out okay okay so there we have got our uh, circle so this is going to be the uh, outside we've got the inside there and now we are just going to thread our holes now if i show you the one that's already been done um it almost creates a sort of i can't remember the word but when they when you're creating a fan out of paper uh, and you are folding the paper one way, folding the paper the other way. That's what you want to be doing with here. Uh, this is that's what you want to do to be able for it to close uh, easily. Uh, so you can see that the cord is going out of this hole, and then on the inside, you can see it there, and then back out, and then in, back out, then in, back out, then in. So I'm just going to get my cord here. Just going to pop it in now with paracord it is slightly thicker uh, so it might need a bit of tumbling but it doesn't take much to put it through obviously if you have thinner cord uh, it's going to be easier to get it through uh, so I've gone in there and I'm going to just fold those together so they match up and pop it through okay so you see I've gone in there Okay, so then this next one is going to be over. So you're going to be able to see it on the outside like that. Okay, and then the next one is going to be under and you just repeat going through. So again, it's not a hard, hard one for the children to get the hang of. If you need more, you just pull it through. And you can already see as you start to pull, it starts to bundle up like the finished one, like that fan that they make. Oh, concertina, that's the word, remembered it. Okay, so yeah, you want to create a concertina um, 
on the uh, outside of the pouch to be able to close close it. Okay, so I'm just going to go in again. Okay, so this is what I was saying before about having an even number um, of holes. So I've got my last one here, but if this one was taken out, then one side of my drawstring is on the right hand side, it's sticking out, but the other one is facing inwards. So if we were to put a toggle on there, you can see that it's not going to close up evenly. So that's why we have pairs of holes to go through. So because I've got this, this extra one here to make it an even number, I'm going to take it through both of the draw sting, uh, drawstrings are pointing outwards like that. Okay, and as you can see, because of the way we've threaded it through, when we pull, it concertinas up together to form a little pouch. Now you can see the size difference, okay, between these two. Okay, now this one is actually only, I think, about an, uh, an inch or more um, larger than the diameter of the plate that we use for this one, but you can see the size, the size different. So this would be a perfect size for uh, a forest school group for, for children to uh, just have to keep their uh, fire making uh, resources in. Um, so the final bit. Now, if I am using the ones from Amazon, then they're uh, dead easy. There's two different types. The one you can see on here on mine has two different holes. So you send uh, each line of paracord through um, and then you just tighten a knot. Whereas this one, is very simple because you just send the two ends through the one hole. So there's one, and then there's the other. Okay, so when we draw that up, okay, that's not going to go anywhere. Okay, and then all you got, you can still see, I've still got. A good hunk of line there. Uh, so you just need to open it up, measure measure out how much you need to leave on, and then just cut off the remaining tight and a knot. If you wanted to go along the antler route, uh, this is just as easy. Again, you're going to use your awl. Uh, you won't be able to use if you did have the craft hole puncher. You're not going to be able to use that for this one. Uh, but uh, a drill would work if uh, you wanted to do them beforehand, if you weren't using the awl, because all you need to do with this is just create two holes in the antler. If you're using a drill, you want a similar size drill to your paracord. Uh, if you're using an awl, then you're just gonna be, have to be careful how deep you go, because the awl obviously gets wider the further you go in. Uh, because you want it to be a tight fit. If it's too loose, it's not going to kind of help grip onto the paracord as well. So I'm just going to put the two holes um, in this, and put this spare piece of leather down. And it goes through very easy because the center of this antler is very soft. So I'm just gonna go in either side. I'm just gonna keep on looking at it until I think, yep, yeah, that's the right diameter for the paracord. I can always make it wider if not okay and now the next one because of how soft it is i don't want to go too close to this hole so i'm going to go back right over to the side obviously when you get into this white bit this is the harder uh, antler uh, this is i suppose what would be the bone marrow so why, why it's so soft um, so i'm just going to put the next hole in there Okay, that one's slightly bigger, but again, it's not a problem. So let me take this toggle off. This one takes a bit, is a bit more fiddly uh, to get through, but nothing too much. So that's on that side. So this one. There we go. So we'll pull that through. Again, this one is slightly loose. I think I did the other hole too, uh, a bit too big. But once you draw it up, it keeps it close. Yeah, it's not gonna, 
it's not slipping off. Um, and it, it, I, in my opinion, it looks a bit nicer as well. It looks more in keeping, uh, keeping with it. So there we have it. There is the bushcraft pouch for uh, UC and forest schools are for young children. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, now the next video I want to do in this series is a carving video for young, younger children. Um, so what we're going to be making is these really easy uh, animals uh, for carving. So you've got a fox, a badger and a hare or a rabbit. Now these all come from the same log so that when you put them back together they form a kind of group of animals all looking in at each other which is pretty cool and these were made by the children in my year four class uh, so they are around like eight or nine years old so young children that can do carving dead easy carving safe um really fun and they look amazing so if you would like to see that video please uh subscribe to the channel i think there's a large proportion i think 80 uh to 90 percent of the people who watch the videos on this channel are subscribed so if you if you like this video and you want to see more uh content related to forest school um and clubs and scouts and younger children uh, getting into bushcraft then uh, please like the video and subscribe uh, so that you don't miss the next video on the carving Fantastic. So thank you very much for watching the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed making your pouch. I'll see you next time for the carving video.